deeper, which is where I would be have you know the best answer. Because I don't know what it's like out here in, in Toronto as far as voice acting goes, right? My, I, all I can tell you is from my point of view, everybody has a different story about how they got into it, and I already kind of told you how I got into it. Um, what I would recommend is looking into getting an agent. That's, I'm not saying run out and get an agent, pay a bunch of money, get an agent, but look into that process because in my you know, experience, and this is just my experience, the, the best way to get your foot in that door is to get an audition spot for a show. And the only reason that I was able to get audition spots was because I, I had representation. So a show gets picked up, they're doing casting, the first people, very rarely will they do a big open casting call for, oh, come on down and be a voice actor. Doesn't happen very often, right? So they'll call up all the agencies in town and say, okay, we have this particular character, these are the descriptions of the character, here's some lines of the character, um, go through your arsenal of actors and find three people that you think should audition, and then boom, 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 you get three audition slots right there. What do you think? If they do that across an entire city, they're not going to have time to see anybody else. They're probably going to see the people that you know have some kind of representations, some representation. It's not plural. And um, and by the time they're done with that, they'll probably cast it, right? So to expand on that, um, there's a, an acting union. It's called ACTRA. A C. ACTRA, yeah, actor. Um, and I know in Vancouver, you can you can essentially um, go down to their offices or call them up or whatever, and they should have a list of reputable agencies in around this area. And the best thing is talk to those people because they know they would have a better idea than I would about what things are like out here. And like like I said, I'm not saying drop down tons of cash, you know, get headshots and all that kind of stuff. Just talk to these people. A lot of agencies now have voice acting departments. So they would, I mean, if you ask them, look, you know, I'm looking to maybe audition for a show, um, how do you think I could do that? And they would probably have a, a good answer for you. So it's the best I can do, sorry. Um, when you're hired to dub, say, an entire season of anime, how long does it take you in a matter of weeks to do it? That's a good question. Um, how long does it take to, to dub these shows? Well, um, it totally varies. Uh, to give you an interesting example, uh, Ranma One Half, the very first anime show I worked on, it took us eight years. It took us eight years to finish that series. I mean, it's a, it's a huge series, right? But we were only recording, you know, once every six months or something, right? Like so, it was, and, and sometimes there were longer breaks, sometimes shorter breaks. So it was a really crazy process, and it just went on forever. Um, to give you an, uh, like the opposite of that, uh, for Gundam Double O. Um, I will do five episodes at a time. And last week I recorded five episodes in three hours. I'm a professional. <laughs> so, I don't remember. I don't remember how long we were at Gundam Wing for. I think for Gundam Wing we were probably recording um, maybe once a month, maybe twice a month on some occasions. And we were probably doing four episodes at a time. And so, I mean, it, it really depends on your role and the size of, of the show. And, um, I mean, one thing that also makes a difference is, like, a, a show like Maison Yokoku, which was an older show, they could have, you know, all the episodes ready for, for dubbing. Whereas a show like Double O, I mean, you know, season two is airing in Japan, right? So there's a, a bit of a, a lag between us getting those episodes. So there. It's kind of hit and miss all over the place. Some shows we, we can go really quick and some not so much. And, you know, as far as my contribution, you know, like, yeah, I can do five episodes in a few hours um, with a show like Gundam Double O, because it's a lot of fighting and stuff, right? And a lot of Roger. I say that a lot. Roger. Roger. Have we finished the first season? I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about that. Uh, <laughs> Come on here. <laughs> <laughs> You're too sweet. Okay, I see an arm back there. Yeah. Oh. Um, I don't know if you know this, but in Wing, um, I wonder what's like the whole deal where like characters like talking to Sandrock. It's like 
or you want me to get out and you can like destroy yourself. Mm -hmm. And then like I figured they came from like colonies, not like cyber crime. Like I, I, I caught the beginning of your question, I'm not hearing you now. Um, if you're asking me about like a specific episode of Gundam Wing, it's a big series, but I know what you're talking about. Sandrock's the best Gundam ever, is the answer to your question. So Sandrock has to self-destruct and tells Catra to exit. Saves his life. Saves his life. The best Gundam ever. What time? What, what time? What? So. Wow, this this is going way too fast. Okay, um, I brought my guitar out here. I was gonna play a song for you. You guys, you guys have a ton of questions. What would you do? You want me to play a song, or do you want to just keep your questions? Yeah. Yeah. So you want to keep answering questions? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I was I prepared Stairway to Heaven. Is it gonna be okay? Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, well, I guess we'll do that.